We're Molly and Dylan. We started building custom furniture almost seven years ago, but before that we had a furniture refinishing business where we sold at a flea market. We did our first furniture giveaway at that time and it took off our business and helped transition from painting furniture to building it. Here we are seven years later doing another furniture giveaway. We posted on our local Facebook group that we wanted to give away a dining table and posted the renderings that Dylan is so good at creating. A week later, we randomly selected our winner, contacted them, and today it's time to start building. We also only spent $60 in wood, which is kind of crazy. We're starting this project off with some very basic and simple 2x10x8 material from the Home Center. And if you've ever worked with this stuff, you know it can warp and move on you and do crazy sorts of things. So I have some pro tips for you. First and foremost, try not to get the center of the tree in the board you select. You will see the center of the tree by seeing the round pith on the end. So you want to avoid that at all costs. And you also want to go ahead and stack that material up in your shop for a couple weeks, just so it can sort of settle out and any sort of twisting and warping that's going to happen can happen before you do your project. The center of the tree is not always avoidable as you'll see in a lot of our materials and that's the reason why I'm ripping these boards in half because the center of the tree is typically in the center of the board. So by removing that center out of our board, we greatly reduce the risk of this board warping on us. For those of you who decide to build this table yourself, we have a set of highly detailed plans in the description below. If you do choose to get those, thank you very much. We put so much time and effort into those plans. It's a great way to support the channel and I promise you will not be disappointed. You will be pleasantly surprised if you decide to get some of those. We decided to take this project just to the next level up by going ahead and jointing and planing all of our boards which just helps get them perfectly square and straight although it's not actually necessary for a project like this there will be a version of the plans that does not require any planing or jointing so if you're interested in doing this on a diy level you certainly can however i am going to stop rambling on let you guys enjoy this montage of us breaking our materials down and getting them ready for assembly We don't have a big enough table, huh? You have to do this in two <clears throat> sections. Yeah, or a band of clamps. Uh, it's easier to do it in bigger sections, though. I feel the need to hop in after that clip and state that Molly and I were both very under the weather during the filming of this video. We were both very sick, stuffy, and that's the reason for the low morale in the shop. Now you guys know Ariad has been a big supporter of our channel over the last couple of years and we wear their products basically every single day. But the number one question we get is what should we start out with? What should we actually get? So Ma and I are gonna share a few of our favorites today, what we're wearing right now. We'll have links in the description below. So if you wanna check any of these products out, just check down there. These are my newest addition to my collection. They have a composite toe, which makes them lightweight, and they also look really good. Eric has a bunch of these boots that have a taller sidewall like this. They're slip-on boots, but they have what's called Ventec, so all of this is mesh, which keeps your legs nice and cool. So if you're doing some yard work or anything where it's kind of hot, these are a go-to of mine because we all got them sweaty calves and it ain't <laughs> fun. So these are great. These are my yard boots and they've been to heck and back over the last couple of years. <laughs> I'm just gonna put my foot up here real quick. I have these tech tights on it that I pretty much wear every time that we're working. They are super comfortable, but if you want something a little more 
thicker or if it's cold outside, these are a great option too. And they have pockets just like these. These are my Ariat Terrain Boots. These aren't work boots. They don't have a safety toe or anything in them, but they are Gore-Tex, waterproof, and insulated. So they are really awesome when it's cold outside. I've taken these all over Colorado's backcountry, and I really do love these boots. They're very comfortable. If you don't like a composite toe in your work boot, these are a great option. They do come with a composite toe, but I have the non-composite toe ones, and I really like these because they are a low height, so I can wear shorter socks with them, and they're just a great work boot all around. Oh. I have three rapid fire clothing recommendations for this time of year. First of all is these rebar pants. These are the double fronts. I've got a whole bunch of them that I like, so there'll be individual links below. And then next off is if you want a quality Sherpa jacket here, okay? This thing is so nice and comfortable. It is literally one of the warmest jackets I own. It's, it's warmer than my 900 fill uh, down jacket, which is saying something. This thing is very very warm and it's also quite stylish so yeah great jacket i've never heard him talk about how warm this jacket is like yeah this is i have a lot of very nice warm jackets this is a very very warm <laughs> jacket and next is pretty much all of ariot's work flannels i absolutely love these things they're not crazy overweight but they're not also that really thin you know sort of really not fun to wear flannel. These things are great in between, so they're not super bulky. You can wear them under things, and they're a great layering system. They also look awesome, and they're not super bulky. So those are my three clothing recommendations for this time of year. And last thing, Ariat has an endless amount of work jeans, so I'll leave links down below to my favorites. So thank you, Ariat, for supporting our channel as always. We absolutely love your stuff. And again, check the links in the description below. Let's get back to this build. Number next. Hey, Bertie. <laughs> <sighs> wrap for the day and ended up going to our old shop to get more things and you would think we would have everything we need but there's more yeah my dad's been uh, commandeering I guess a lot of our old tools we've been slowly slowly plundering his his uh, his shop <laughs> over the last I guess what two years now yeah. and slowly taking back our things little by little and uh, we've made one of our final runs well Mm, I don't think it's our final. Wow. We uh, clearly haven't done much welding in a while, but it's coming back to the channel. We've been reinvigorated. Our, weld our welding, our passion for welding has been 
reinvigorated, so we're dusting, dusting all the old welding stuff off. Literally. Well, it is definitely bedtime, but my mind is on this project, as I'm sure many of you can relate to, and I just want to get some more stuff done. So <laughs> I've eaten my dinner, and I've decided to come back out to the shop. So let's see if I can't manhandle this final glue up on the tabletop and see what else we can't get done over the next couple of hours when I really should be in bed. But you know what? Sometimes you gotta take those moments of energy you have and uh, put them into a project when it's there, you know? definitely say that was one of the better glue ups I've had in quite a while. I forgot how much I really enjoy using these pipe clamps versus some of these other fancier cabinet clamps and things. You just get so much more clamping force with these and they just are so much less finicky and we've had them in storage for quite a long time. Don't know why we haven't brought them back out. But yeah, main glue up is done for the tabletop so tomorrow we'll be able to take that thing out get it sanded up and finished and the tabletop part of this table will be fully done. So we have our entire leg assembly laid out here. It's made up of a bunch of pieces so I want to lay it out visually first so that I hopefully don't mess this up. And now I'm going to sort of separate these pieces like so and we're going to glue these together and then tomorrow we'll glue all, what is this, four of these sections together to make the final leg assembly. So uh, let's get to it. Alexa, play 70s country. Cool. Please. Terms in the Alexa app. Should I start your free trial? No. No. Last glue up for the night. I just need to glue these two pieces together. They're gonna to make a beam that's a stretcher across the bottom of the two bases. And uh, now's the perfect time to glue them up. Let's get to it. another day of building here. We're working on these bases, but first thing we did this morning was take everything out of clamps that I glued up last night. And then I went ahead and pre-assembled one of these bases just to see how it would go. And we're about to start on the second one. And I wanted to share the construction method we're using for putting these bases together because it's very DIY friendly, very strong, very simple, requires very few tools, best of all. So. What we're doing is we're using regular old screws. However, in order to hide those screws, we're using the combination of a plug cutter and a pre-drill bit. So this pre-drill bit not only pre-drills the hole for the screw, but it also has the countersink, and the countersink is actually a bit longer than a normal countersink bit, which allows you to actually plunge in with your countersink and sink the screw further in, which leaves room for a plug like this. Now a plug is different than a dowel because a plug shows the face of the board and a dowel when you cut it off shows the ingrain of a board. So if you're using a dowel to plug these holes, it's gonna be very, very obvious. Whereas if you use a plug, 
you can actually match the grain if you're selective enough and make these virtually disappear. And the way you make a plug is using one of these very inexpensive plug cutters. So you can get these plug cutters in different sizes to match the diameter of your pre-drill and uh, countersink bit. And yeah, so you just use this to simply cut out a plug anywhere in any scrap board. And what's cool about it is, like I was saying, is that if you have a section like this screw here that runs through some grain, I drilled this plug out of a scrap that was kind of over some grain area. And when this gets sanded, this is all just gonna sort of meld together and virtually disappear. So very simple construction methods in this base and very DIY friendly. We'll leave links in the description below if you wanna pick up a set of these that uh, match. You need to make sure that they're the same diameter. It's a good thing to have in your arsenal because sometimes you just need to do something quick and easy, but you kind of want it to disappear. This is a go-to method of mine. Are you uh, ready for this part? I'm ready. Cause uh, I'm pretty nervous, not gonna lie. We've gotten to the finishing stages of this project and we're gonna do something we've never done before and that is use a black stain. Why is this always so nerve wracking? Black, black stain. <laughs> this is light. We're going black stain. Like, a little risky, eh? But yeah, pine is notoriously difficult to get a non-yellow good looking finish on and for most people they don't want yellow and one of the ways you can get rid of the yellow is by going black so <laughs> we're we're using a solid color stain meaning this is more or less paint that's gonna let the grain show through something we've never done before but we're gonna try it out we're personally kind of fans of the way natural pine looks but we understand that not for everyone so uh we're giving this a try so i'm gonna run through our finishing products here quickly so that you understand what we're doing as uh, as we're doing it. The first things first, we're going to start with a pre-stain conditioner. This is a commercially available one from Memwax. These are kind of expensive for what they are, but really there's nothing to this stuff. It's kind of annoying that it costs as much as it does. However, what this does is it creates a nice even steel coat which sort of levels out the porosity of the wood using big words here to make myself sound smart. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but essentially it allows for the stain to go on more evenly. We have basically used all of this up and it works pretty well, but today we're actually gonna be using a heavily diluted shellac. So we make our own shellac. This is way cheaper than this stuff. And we literally just diluted the crap out of it with uh, denatured alcohol. So it's probably about that much of shellac and about that much of denatured alcohol. And this is just going to mildly seal everything. It's also going to raise the grain. 
So once we apply this first product, we're actually gonna come back and sand it with 320 grit sandpaper to knock the grain back down, get that really nice smooth finish. Then we're gonna move on to that solid color stain. So I'm not really sure if this is considered a gel stain, but it's definitely more in that gel stain arena than it is a penetrating stain. This is basically looks like paint. And so we're going to apply that on and you have to basically wipe this stuff off immediately or else it will just be solid black. So it's gonna be interesting doing this entire top. Hopefully that goes well. And uh, yeah, that's what we're actually doing the bottom side first. Make, <laughs> make sure, you know. And then finally moving on to finish. The person we're giving this table away to expressed interest in wanting to be able to put this on their covered patio. And so we're going to be putting a outdoor rated and very UV stable product on it in case they decide to go that route. I obviously wouldn't put this in like full on elements, but on a covered patio where you're mostly just getting some uh, temperature swings and some uh, indirect sunlight, probably okay. So just to be on the safe side, we're using Total Boats Lust product. This is a phenomenal varnish. This stuff is really easy to use. It also, over what is on me? Is there something on me? I don't see anything. Gosh, that's the worst thing ever when you fuck something's crawling on you. I really like this product because one thing, it's very easy to apply. It self levels very well. It also has a recoat time of just one hour, meaning you can actually do this varnish fairly quickly, unlike most other varnishes. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna start with the uh, high gloss, which is not the finish we want, but you actually use high gloss to build, so it's a much better building finish. So we'll do a couple coats of this, and then we'll finish off with the matte finish version. And so you only have to apply the matte on the final coat to get that nice matte sheen, and you always build with the high gloss. So that's the order of, uh, of finished stuff, and now we just have to, just have to do it. it. Just have to go for it. A little nerve wracking. A little nerve wracking. <laughs> Ain't nothing to it but to do it. when I sing any sort of phrases when we're talking in the shop. So I'm ready to use my Festival Domino on this here table. Cause why? It's our last step. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. See, we need to use. No, talk normal. <laughs> this, is, this is also the shop all the time. All I do is talk in weird voices. <laughs> and drives me nuts. <laughs> All right, this is called a Z clip or a tabletop clip. This is what we're using to attach the top. You wanna use something like this to attach your top because the top can expand and contract with seasonal conditions. So you wanna make sure you allow it to expand and contract during those seasons so it doesn't just buckle. So that's what these are for. I'll show you how to install them. You can actually 
just cut with your table saw a groove in this board before you ever install it and you slide into that groove. You can, I've seen people use a drill, you can use a biscuit joiner, or you can use a domino like this, or you can even use a uh, like big forcener bit and put these in. So there's a lot of different ways that you can actually install these, but we're using this bad boy. Let's get to it. This table turned out even better than expected. If you guys are interested in building one yourself, be sure to check out the plans that are linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.